you're going to be impressed like damn i can pull this off i can literally pull this off nothing can ever come my way anymore that's gonna destroy me because i just pulled this off and i'm sure you can hear already i sound crazy i i look wild i just try to put on some makeup on because i do not feel great but i have only right now to film this video because if i don't do it right now this video will not happen because it's the first thing that you learn is a solo parent time management because it is crazy i cannot believe how much time I used to have on my hands before I became a solo mom. Today I wanna to share a little bit about like what is it like to be a solo parent. I've been a solo parent the last two years. I've gained a lot of experience. I wanna encourage you, if you are about to become a solo parent, by choice, not by choice, whatever it might be, that you will have some tools on your hands and some emotional support to go through this journey because I certainly didn't. I was not expecting, as most people, to become a solo parent. And since I've been on a solo parent journey for day one, since day one, I think I can help you hopefully feel more supported and better about the situation that you might be facing or that you're currently in. You know a little bit about my story. You know it wasn't a conventional breakup or anything like that and I will share a little bit more at the end about this and how I managed through this although there's a lot of legal things going on I will share a little bit about it and maybe even that will help you feel better about yourself I don't know right now I just want to give you some tips and how you can overcome and be stronger in this whole situation because I think that's the most value I can give to you the first thing I think the hardest part for me was the denial. Being in denial that I was going to be a solo parent, especially coming from a very stable family, coming from a family where there's no divorces and everything is, seems normal in a sense. I never thought I was gonna be a solo parent because I was in a long-term relationship. I had a good job. I had a dog, I had a house, I had everything. I lived in this beautiful place, Hawaii, and it was just so, so special. And so I didn't see that coming at all. And so that was just me being in denial for the longest time was the hardest part. And I think that's the hardest part, especially for people who obviously no one wants that. No one wants to get divorced. No one wants to be a solo parent. No one wishes that for their child. No one wants to just be the sole provider financially, emotionally, physically, all the stuff. Um, but just the denial part is I'm sure a lot of burden that you're carrying on your shoulders feeling like this isn't me I'm not I'm sole parent what the hell I'm single mom like no way like I just coming from a single parent and I know a lot of people don't know the difference between being a single mom or a single dad a solo parent solo dad there's a difference and just for you who don't know being a single mom is basically you're separated but you have the child let's say three days at a, at a time and then your partner has the child three days at the time and so you switch and so you know on this weekend I'm child free or in those three days I'll be child free and then it goes back and forth there's different parenting schedules like one week at a time few days at a time there's different things but you know you will have some time off in a sense of not being with your children or child and when you're solo parent you are 24 7 there's no dropping off your child somewhere. There is no scheduled child-free time. You on your own. And that is a huge emotional burden on your shoulder that is different than being a single mom. And I know I don't want to discredit any single moms out there because I know that is also a really tough situation to be in, having to give away, in a sense, your child. But it's definitely a different responsibility. It's a different type of feeling and so i want to talk a little bit more about solo parenting because i don't think there's a lot of information out there there's always these like i'll be a solo parent for the next 48 hours and i'm like great that's not what a solo parent is a solo parent doesn't have an end and i think that's the biggest misunderstanding that most people don't get that there is no end to it it's continuous and it's it's not finite in a way that you know this day i have time off and this day i don't and so that's the biggest burden on someone knowing that you're on your own and a lot of people do have the luck to have family and friends i i'm living currently with my parents i don't think i would have been able to pull it off without them and so there's also a lot of people who don't have that and that's just wild because just me having my parents support me is already feels like a lot and I cannot imagine people not having anyone. And so I came back to Germany because I was dumped pregnant and I was like, where am I gonna go? And my parents were so kind to take me in. That's what 
beautiful family does and I've been living with them and they've been supporting me and my child and that has been the biggest supporting factor but maybe and I didn't really have any friends here I just haven't been in Germany for 10 years and so I didn't really have good connections here and so my family's kind of small and so I was really relying on them but if you are have someone in your circle whether it's family whether it's friends try to rely on them as much as possible if they tell you hey i'll take watch your child for a month for for a month that would be great no for for an hour and you can take a shower take that if if you have any type of support don't feel like you have to do it all on your own take the support and just say thank you so much i will take a shower in peace and i think that's something that is so hard to grasp. I cannot believe how wasteful I used to be with my time. Like how much time I would have on my hands and now I'm like, I can't even take a shower. I just don't have time. And right now I have time because my daughter just turned two and she just started kindergarten. And so now I have the mornings for myself, which I'm preparing to go back to work very soon. And now I have just a few days where I can just film some videos and stuff. But it's just like you're with your child 24 seven. And it's just such a different type of burden mentally and physically. Sorry, this is a drain. I'm just gonna wait because it's like draining off. Oh, it's 9% of my battery. In the process of accepting that you are going to be a solo parent, maybe you're transitioning from being a single mom to a solo parent or from a normal family to being, become a solo parent, or maybe you started normal and now one parent just left and ditched you, discarded you, whatever, maybe you dealt with a narcissist and you just on your own. That happens unfortunately quite a lot. Accepting it is the hardest part, but it's the first part for you to feel better, accepting it. And so that's something I wish I did sooner, accepting I was going to be a sole parent. My partner didn't show up to birth. I was like, that should have been the first sign to be like, you know what? He's not going to be in the picture. He is not showing up to his own child's birth. He's not going to be part of it. He's, well, if he can't come to that, like, yeah, he's not gonna be part. And I was just still in denial, I was just, try not to think about it in that sense but the sooner you can accept that that's your path now and it doesn't have to be a negative one but it can be also a positive one is the first step for you to heal and to just let a lot of weight off your shoulders and i know it's easier said than done and that's the second thing like the shame like get rid of the shame feeling oh my gosh i'm a solo parent i'm i'm not worthy like i'm not even worthy to be when i'm pregnant i'm not worthy to be when we created life like just feeling this unworthiness and even for me like i had literally someone say to me oh yeah my my dad said if you're a normal person because who does that to someone and i was like oh my god like People think I'm crazy because no one would do that to a normal person, but just understanding that has a lot of times nothing to do with you and it's this person's insecurity or whatever feeling they have and it has nothing to do with you. Like you're feeling not worthy because someone chose to discard you or to ditch you or to let you hanging, you and your, chil you and your children or child, just getting rid of the shame and just be like, wow, I'm so proud I got to do it all on my own. Like, show me someone else who can do it. Show me someone else and you will realize very soon that you can do it on your own, which is really hard, really draining. It's just so, it's so many emotions and I think I'm kind of numb to the situation so I don't have any as much any emotions anymore to it because I just cried for way too long. I think you're going to be impressed like damn I can pull this off. I can literally pull this off. Nothing can ever come my way anymore that's gonna destroy me because I just pulled this off. And knowing that you're doing so well that you are just doing everything possible and focusing on what you can control because you cannot control someone else. You showing up for your child, you getting up in the morning, you making them breakfast, you nursing them, you taking care of them. You can only control what you can control. Although I thought it was a very basic thing to do, you cannot make someone pay child support. The system is so screwed in so many ways that someone can get away with not paying child support. And you're like, hey, how is this even possible? And like you get lawyers and, and all this stuff and like still you're there not getting any child support and the only thing you can control is you making money for your child and that is tough that is really really brutal i burned through all my savings providing for her and i think it's really a tough one to swallow especially if you are dependent financially on your husband if you're dependent financially on your partner wife it's not always the girls end up being alone but it unfortunately is a lot of times women knowing that you can only control yourself. You, all you can do is just be the best person for your child that you possibly can and you cannot control the other person. And children, 
usually know, although they're small, they will know who's the person who's there, like who's taking care of them, who's providing for them, who's giving them comfort, who's giving them a routine, who's giving them safety, stability, and focusing on that rather than focusing on what the partner isn't doing and how disappointing that is and how frustrating and sad and disrespectful and you get feel this anger. I know this anger of feeling like, do it to me, just don't do it to my child. Like what, what on earth, just do it to me, but don't do it to my child. And just knowing that setting boundaries with people that if you want to have a certain standard for your daughter, have the same standard for yourself, people don't respect you. Unfortunately, you have to make sure that those boundaries are set with people. That's the most beautiful thing you can do, be present. And there's, day, there's days where I'm so scared and so anxious and just feel like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to explain this to her? And like, how can I make sure that she doesn't feel like something was wrong with her is a tough one. And I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a therapist. And so I don't, I can't really tell you what to do in that situation because I haven't figured that out for myself yet, how I will make sure that she's not affected by it because eventually she will be affected by it. But how can I minimize the effect? How can I make sure she doesn't feel neglected or left alone or abandoned? And I don't know that yet. And so I'm trying to figure that out with a therapist. But I just want to tell you, focus on what you can control and how you can make it as easy for a children or child as possible. And the more energy you're wasting on being angry at that person, being in sorrow and being disappointed and just using so much of that energy, try to use the energy because it is so exhausting. Try to put it all into your children and into yourself. That's the number one thing. Control what you can control. Sorry, my nose has been running crazy and the battery just died, but I just wanted to keep going on the video. Another important thing why it's so important to focus on yourself so you can wake up every morning without regret, every morning without feeling guilty. And I think that's the biggest part in this whole process that helped me was when I wake up, I don't feel any guilt. I don't feel any regret. I know everything I'm doing is serving my child, serving myself. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think that being said, a lot of times because you feel so many emotions, you feel so angry, you feel so disappointed, you feel neglected, you feel all kinds of emotions, or at least that's how I felt, is the number one thing. I will always tell what happened to me, and it is a really fine line because my situation was so messy. I will never say a negative thing about her father, about her. I can recommend you do the same because at the end of the day, they're half off them. They are half of their father or mother, no matter what situation with your mom or dad, but biologically. And so if there's one thing I hold dearly is I will make sure she never feels like half of me is in any form or type bad because they're half of them. And although I'm sure sometimes you feel like, oh, I cannot believe he's doing this or I cannot, I cannot comprehend. I think that's a really important part. My daughter will never hear a bad word about her dad from me. Never. And that's a tough one to swallow. And that's a really, really difficult one because sometimes you're like, ah, really keeping those emotions in. But I think that's a really, really important part. And especially for me finding my voice in it without, um, because I got sued from him and for defamation because I shared what happened to me and nothing happened besides me losing thousands thousands, thousands of dollars to defend me in this case. All I've done so far and all I will continue to do is share my story if it means helping also other women, other men, other people who might be in a similar situation, unfortunately. And so for me, that means still being able to share what happened to me. I will always speak up. I will always, I will never dim the crazy thing that I went through. I will never not say or lie about what happened in order to protect someone else. And so for me, that means I will still be allowed to share what happened to me. I will always be allowed to say what I went through and I make, and I have been doing this. And that's also why this lawsuit didn't go anywhere is I never talked someone bad. All I did is I shared and I did it also anonymously, which I didn't even have to do what happened to me. And unfortunately, sometimes when you share what happens to you, it makes reveals how someone else has been. And so I will continue to share my story and I encourage you to share yours. I get thousands, literally thousands of messages. I couldn't open all the messages that I've got from women, especially who've been through 
something similar or have experience or were just going through it and said that they feel not alone. And if that means me sharing my story and being vulnerable, that's all I care about, making sure that other women feel supported because I felt incredibly lonely. I felt incredibly sad. I felt like no one in my circle went through something similar. And also getting messages from other women saying like, it's gonna be okay, really helped me. And it was like strangers on the internet. And I was like, oh my gosh, like those messages meant a lot to me. And if I can do that for other people as well, I think it's worth sharing and it's worth being vulnerable. But yeah, I just wanna remind you that it's not about should talking to the other person it's really it's not about bat mouthing anyone else it's about sharing your story and i will continue to do that in the past two years i've been writing a book and i don't know when i will publish it but if you're interested in learning more about my personal story you can sign up for my email another tip i have for you is to focus on having hobbies i know this sounds crazy but don't try to get into a new relationship i've been single for the last two and a half years now and being single is good because you can focus on what you truly want you can focus on what you truly deserve you want to make sure that if you end up having a new partner that the person is the right person and focus on yourself pick up some hobbies I picked up so many hobbies and it's so healing and it's so helpful to do that and not just to rot in bed but just picking up stuff delete all the social media platforms that you have to I have had to deactivate my Instagram because I was just too it was just too close to home and it helped me and I just picked up a bunch of hobbies which I do every day I do knitting and I do jump roping and I do workout and I just try whenever I have a moment try to focus on my hobbies and focus on my, myself instead of focusing on the negative aspects in my life and really focusing on the positive which will lead you to way more happiness and remember like at the end of the day like you can be so proud how far you've come. You can be so proud. This is such a difficult journey. It is so draining. It is so tough on you mentally and physically that you've gotten this far. And if you are about to become a solo parent, I just want you to know you're going to be okay. You are going to get out of this so strong. Your worth does not is not defined by someone who's leaving you and or if you have to leave someone because it's unbearable for you to stay. Just know you're going to be okay. And it's going to be a long process and it's gonna you're gonna have good days and you're gonna have bad days, but at the same time, you're just going to be okay. I am currently still dealing with lawsuits and so I will share more about my story, but right now I feel there's certain things I wanna settle first because I don't wanna get all these financial hits all the time. I can't keep defending myself for st to be really honest. Yeah, I know I said I was gonna share more about it, but for me, the sooner you realize you're going to be a solo parent, I think I can tell share you one thing is that when I was in ICU and tried to reach the person, I was there alone in ICU. And you can see how um, fragile and in denial and naive I was because even at that point, I didn't think I was going to be a solo parent. And so don't make the mistake. Don't drag it out too long. The sooner you can accept it, the sooner you can feel like, hey, I'm going to be on my own in this journey and it's okay. I will have friends, I will make friends. I'm right now trying to make friends. It's really hard when you're 29 and you can't really go out. Um, don't be so hard on yourself, you're going to be okay. And do not compare yourself to social media. I've seen people post on social media. When I was pregnant, I would see them being engaged. I would see them being pregnant. I, they post it all over social media. But for me, it was very obvious because I know social media is fake, but when I saw things that were happening with lawyers and then I saw what was posted I was like that is not representing what's going on but okay you do you and so you know that sometimes you can have a black and white on paper and see what is happening in someone's life and what they're posting it has nothing to do with reality it has nothing to do people who excessively post about their relationships probably compensating something that they don't have and so yeah don't get sad about it because it can get really sad I think I even get more sad when I see in public like someone being in a really beautiful family but I try not to get jealous I try to know that one day this will be in my cards and I will have that family and it might not be right now but it will happen eventually and I know then what I want and I know what I can bring to the table and that I'm strong and I'm not coming from a place of lack but I'm coming from a place of I can do so much and if you can add value to my life and if I can add value to your life it might be a possibility for you to have a new family and um, I hope that so much for my daughter and I hope that so much for myself as well but until then I know I will be okay on my own and I don't need that external validation. 
I'm still sick, and but I'm not in Germany anymore. I just woke up in Spain, which is so nice. But I wanted to finish off the video with something really important, and that is I want you to remember that every good story, every good outcome never started from it was so easy and we just coasted along and life was easy and breezy. It's good stories start with something hard. Good origin stories starts with something meaningful, something difficult to overcome. And you have a really good opportunity here because you can show, look, I became this person despite this happening to me. It's not just this victim mentality, look what's happening to me, everything is horrible. But it's you showing up and saying, look what I got done despite this happening to me, despite those obstacles that I had. That's a good origin story that starts from something difficult, something that you never thought you would have to overcome and go through, but it will allow you to actually become a person that is more valuable. You're going to be a more valuable person after you went through this. You're going to have so many more skills under your belt. You're going to be more valuable to the next person that you let in your life because you're going to say, I'm not accepting this bare minimum here anymore. I'm not going to just accept someone love momming me or treating me nice. And then when it's convenient, they, they stop treating you nice. It's you're going to accept only people into your life that will reach you at the new level you were at, because you're no longer this old person. You're no longer at the spot of that you were before this happened to you because you had to go through this crazy time. You had to overcome this crazy obstacle and no one is going to be allowed in your circle anymore who's not adding value to the new person that you are. And that's so important. That's why I was preaching to stay single as long as you can, just so that you know what you want. And you're like, what? This is what I used to be attracted to? This is what I led into my life? You're going to be like, what was I? What, what, what was I thinking? And you're done doing charity work. You're done doing charity work. We on to people who enrich our life and that we can enrich and we make better and they make our life better. You're going to be a much more valuable person in your next relationship and the next person's going to be so thankful that you went through this because you have a new set of standard and you have a new set of values and you're just going to attract a whole different type of person. And don't have the lack mindset of, oh my gosh, I have a child who wants someone who has already kids from someone else. Just know that there are people out there who are going to love you and who are going to see your children as the best part of you and not the worst part of you. You're going to see people who are good looking on the outside and in the inside. And it's so funny when you people, but he's so good looking and, but you're good looking. Are you acting the shitty? No. So there's people out there who are good looking and actually are kind and are responsible and are taking accountability and are people that are going to feel so good in your life and who are not going to just who are just not having one trait they have multiple traits they have combinations of traits you're going to see that there are people who are not cheating you're not a person who cheats so there are people out there who are not cheating that was for me the hardest part because i felt in the beginning like oh my gosh everybody cheats i never cheated so i know there's people out there who don't cheat who just don't have the character of someone who cheats and so there's going to be people who are not going to cheat because it's out of character. It's not who they are. It's beautiful. You're going to encounter those types of people. You're going to feel so mind blown on what you used to accept. You're going to be so happy that you now let people into your life that if they do not require the standard that you set, and it's not about being arrogant. This is just about knowing that you're not going to never put yourself in a position again where you're going to be treated shitty. You're never going to put yourself in a, treated, in a position again where someone can control you. You're never going to put yourself in a position again who has anyone can do you harm to set you back the way you were set back, that you're emotionally attached, that you're financially attached, that you're physically attached, whatever it is, that you just feel so good on your own. That only a person who can offer you something more than what you can give yourself. That you're only going to allow someone in your life that truly makes sense. And if your standards are so high, it has to be a good person. It's not going to be someone who just says, oh, I have money or I look good or or, or that. that's fun. It's like you're going to have someone in your life because like, damn, like they really need to show up in order for me to even consider them being part of my life. And that's beautiful. There are good relationships out there. There's good people out there. And so yeah, your time is coming. Your time is coming. Just keep focusing on yourself. Just because you're heartbroken, just because something happened in your life, don't let that affect the rest of your life.
work on everything else because you don't want to wake up with a whole set new of other problems because your heart broken now you let yourself go make sure you work on all the other areas so when your heart is healing when it time heals you and makes you feel better not everything else to shit everything else is still strong and going and so that will also attract better people make sure you get on your stuff work out get hobbies eat healthy be around good people do some volunteering do something that makes your heart feel better and you're going to attract better people and one little thing i like to do if i feel like not good enough I think about someone I really admire, someone who has such a good energy and who has such a like good confidence. And I don't know, I don't know an example right now, but for example, um, I don't know, Kylie Jenner. It's not my my favorite person, but like she's a person who's definitely had has good confidence. You think like damn, like she has really good confidence. And just remember, would she accept that? Would she call back the guy? Would she run after this person? Would she accept the bare minimum? Or would she just be like, whatever's meant to be will find me? I think that's something she said actually. But was she, would she be like that? Or would she be like begging someone to choose unmarried? Would they be begging, chasing them? No. So if for a day you feel a little bit down, just remember, would she do that? No, so why would I? But yeah, you're going to be fine. You're going to be just great. And I wish you all the best and be kind to another. <laughs>